Hey, what's up, guys? It's Gatekeeper, and uh, kind of been a while. Yeah, let's see. Uh, really fast. I'm just gonna fix the webcam. Reset trans fall. Oh, get rid of this guy. Screw up. No one likes you. So, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Over over a year. <laughs> over a year. Let's see. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Gatekeeper. God, yeah, look at me. My beard wasn't as glorious and majestic. I was so young. Unchanged by the world now. <laughs> Never. So, yeah. Kind of kind of been a while. Over a year. Let's see. October 27th, 2017. Yeah. A little, little bit. So, this, uh, this little... I guess I'll make it a vlog to make life easy for everybody. I was gone for a year. In fact, not a little bit over a year, like a year and I think one or two months. Um, in Idaho, actually, I was out there for job training through the uh, uh, National Job Corps program. And for anyone out there who doesn't really know what Job Corps is, they may have heard about it or though more than likely you haven't heard about it. It's it's an interesting program that I never knew existed until my mom heard about it from one of her co-workers at school who had her son go through the program to uh, earn the certifications to become a certified electrician, I believe, was his case. And kind of just, my mom told it, told me about it from her, from her co-worker and said uh, it might be something to look into since I wasn't interested in college at the time. I will briefly summarize my absolute, complete, and total hatred for the American education system. It sucks. You will learn things you're not going to use ever. I mean, I had to take Algebra 1, Algebra 2, all those dumb core classes. And to date, I graduated 2017, like June of 2017. So, you know, a couple months before this video, actually. And... Not once have I ever had to use the Pythagorean Theorem or any of those dumb formulas. I mean, yeah, I've had to use basic addition, subtraction, a little multiplication here and there, just for shits and giggles. I didn't have to use any of the really advanced formulas and calculations and any of that nonsense. At least with the high school system, I didn't have to pay anything. I didn't have to pay any money. My parents just paid for it through, you know, taxes, basically. And even then, it wasn't like a direct tuition. Which is nice, because it, I didn't have to pay a cent. Then, I made the uh, mistake of trying to go to PCC, which is uh, Portland Community College out in Portland, Oregon. Well, they have a couple campuses. The one I went to is in downtown Hillsboro, which is in the Portland metro area. For any of the viewers who don't know anywhere regarding Hillsboro or Oregon. You may be in your Kentucky for all I know. Nothing wrong with Kentucky. Stay cool. But, um, <laughs> basically, I wanted to take a dedicated course in, uh, shit, what was it? Uh, no, it was video production. Like, video slash film and audio production. Just a basic course. And, you know, you, you'd, you'd imagine that something like that you wouldn't need any real reading or writing or math or science or any of that shit. At most, you need to know how to read, like, the title of a video clip. Or how to read a script or whatever. You know, so basic English. Like, you, you speak the language kind of basic, not... What is the real meaning of the, art of the, the author's variation? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Can you read it? Your ABCs and one, two, threes. Yes, good. You're just gonna live a life. But, <laughs> so yeah, I just tried to take a simple course in video audio production. And for some god awful reason, PCC forced me to take a reading and a writing class. Two things I demonstrated not even a year prior to that by graduating high school that I was perfectly capable of doing. I mean, I got like, you know, I don't remember exact grades, but between A and C in both of those classes, respectively. Not through PCC. 
I didn't bother going through PCC. I maybe stuck it out a couple weeks, honestly, before it was just realizing that it's just a complete repeat of high school senior uh, English, both reading and writing, except this time I had to pay a couple grand per class. It was not fun. It was a waste of time, and in this case, money. Thank God there weren't any textbooks. I would be another couple hundred thousand in debt. It's insane, honestly. So, I'll spare you the, the gritty nitty details of all of the bullshit I had to put up with the, the writing teacher specifically. She was terrible at her job, long story short. And uh, because I just I did not want to do college, I didn't want to have to take those dumb prerequisite classes that didn't even match the program I was wanting to take, which in my case, video and audio production. Nothing crazy, not advanced theoretical physics. Doesn't make sense. Not at all. <laughs> so, didn't last there for very long. And at the time, I was working with uh, Target, I believe, at the time. And uh, it was actually, I think it was right around the time of this video. So I had the, you know, the red shirt on and everything. And uh, at the time, you know, Target was fun, but I wanted something better. I wanted a more, I wanted a career. I didn't want a job. You know, just to work a nine to five boring job just to pay the bills and meet ends. I didn't want that. I wanted to be more successful than that because I knew I could do better than that. Just working a basic job. No, I wanted a career where I could thrive and be happy and really enjoy what I did. And so I, for a little while, you know, I just kept chugging along with Target. Kind of nothing really ever happened there. And then my mom told me about this Job Corps program, which at the when she first told me about it, it sounded too good to be true, honestly. Like, free government-funded program where you learn a trade. Or if you're really good, trades. Uh, but that's pretty rare. But basically, this program, it's government-funded by the Department of Labor, or in the case of my center, there are different centers located all across the United States. Mine was located in Nampa, Idaho, just outside of Boise. Uh, like, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes at most out of Boise, so really close to there, um, but really far from home was kind of the trade-off. There was a center in Astoria, Oregon, that had the same program I wanted to take, which was computer technology. And at the time, the center was completely full. I mean, you live on center. Um, there are some cases, like with my center, there were people who already lived in Napa, Idaho, or maybe Caldwell or some city really close by, so that they could have their parents, or if they drove at the time, they could just drive and go to their trade, and they just didn't live on center. So they had all the freedoms outside of trade hours, which was uh, 8 to 3.30. But, so I went to that Centennial Job Corps, the center was called Centennial, and they have a bunch of other ones. The one my brother went to, he actually went to the same program in the center in Astoria. He left, um, I want to say, two, three months before I did. Don't remember exact months, but um, but I left April of uh, 2018, and I finished in no no I started March of 2018. I finished April of 2019, so I've only been home for a few months now, and kind of liking it now. That program was very great. It my instructor was all right. Uh, his name was Freddie Rosario, or uh, little known secret, it, his actual name is Ferdinand, and if he's seeing this, I'm sorry, Mr. Rosario, I had to spread the secret, <laughs> but, oh, it's not like I'm breaking any laws, whatever, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and the, the goal of that program was to earn my CompTIA A+, certification, which is pretty much a globally recognized pretty much baseline certification if you want to get into like the IT industry. 
and CompTIA is the company who who hands out the certification, who manages it. They have a couple other certifications. They have the Network Plus, Security Plus. They like their pluses. It's kind of weird. Um, there's another one. There's a big book. Uh, there were a couple others. I don't remember, but uh, the A plus was the main one. Um, although t technically our primary certification uh, was the Certiport IC3, which was a, a good baseline understanding of just basic computer hardware and software. Like, did you know certain keyboard shortcuts? Did you know how to use uh, more advanced things in Microsoft Office, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and uh, Access? Which, uh, for those of you who have no idea what the hell Access is, it's like a program where you can maintain and create databases. So, not really a thing you'd use out outside of specific needs for it. So if you're just a YouTuber, you probably aren't going to need a database. <laughs> but it's there, and in IT, you kind usually you work with a lot of big databases, either for uh, all the users on your network or all the computer hardware in your inventory system, whatever. So we had to know the basic in and ins and outs of all of those different programs. And that certification demonstrates and proves that you do know that, that information. And that was the guaranteed certification. And it was free for the students. Because, you know, government funding, score. Um, but the A+, is a lot more in-depth, a lot more knowledge is needed and required. There are two different tests. Um, at the time that I was enrolled in Job Corps, it was the, uh, what was it, the 220901 and 220902 tests, um, but they only, they recently, I think, January or February, I think is when the, the 1001 and 1002 tests came out, which basically got rid of a lot of older technologies like <laughs> floppy drives and I think dot matrix printers, yeah, real old school shit. <laughs> They finally got rid of all of those older things that are just not even in small settings used in this day and age. I mean, maybe like a yeah, maybe like my grandpa or something still uses it. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> when they also added a lot more recent technologies like cloud computing and virtualization, VR, all the more modern, up-to-date stuff. So they just it didn't really change a ton, but it's just a more modernized version of what I was already learning. Um, and at the time that it came out, it was actually uh, right around the same time, we got word that the uh, Federal Department of Labor, or actually no, in our case, it was the Forestry Center. Our center was maintained by the Forestry Center. And it was right around that same time we got word that the Forestry Center was going to turn over jurisdiction of our center to the Idaho Department of Labor. Rather than have it be a federally run program, it was going to be state ran. Which, you know, sounds nice and all, but because of that, they weren't going to keep it as a job core center. They were still going to have it as like a, uh, like kind of like a low income trade based program of sorts but it wasn't going to be a job core program so they had to get rid of all of the students well it sounds a little harsh but they had to move a lot of the students out of the program uh, anyone who was over 50 percent done with their trade um, would be allowed to you know push through maybe get sped up a little bit not have to worry in too much detail about certain topics just to get them done and actually graduated through the program and anyone under 50 percent was going to get shipped off to another job core center preferably already somewhere in the area so they don't have to go to like new york or anything crazy like that but um luckily at the time i was over 50 percent and we just had like a <laughs> like a uh, what's the term cliff like a cliff notes kind of version of the testing and all the different test offs and all the topics and so I didn't get as much 
in-depth knowledge, I just got a good overall understanding of it. Of all the different things that I still had yet to complete in my, uh, the big checklist of all the topics we had to make bullet points and check mark as we went along was called our TAR, which stood for Training Achievement Record. And the Job Corps really loved our acronyms, and uh, <laughs> it was really funny. Uh, on our first day, couple, like first week or a month, if you really sucked at your life, <laughs> uh, you were called a CPP, stood for uh, Career Preparation Period. And then you, after that period, the CPPs were the newbies, basically, the new guys on center, um, you know, learning the ins and outs of everything. Then you went into your CTT, which is your career technical training. And then you, when you were all done, you finally finished your trade, you got to 100%. You went to CTRW, which is career technical, no, career readiness workshop. Which is the trans no career transitions workshop? My bad. That's where you know you fit, you did all the transition stuff. They help you look for a job, maybe um, go to college, maybe advanced training. That bunch of different options for the next steps after you're you're done at Job Corps, sort of thing. And so, <laughs> lots of acronyms, very fun. But because I didn't get the full in-depth knowledge of the testing the testing info for the A plus exam I wasn't able to take the A plus exam and there were only a certain number of vouchers that were provided for the students that were already prepaid for and there was only I think there were two sets left by the time the center was shutting down they just once it was announced and really set in stone the center director said, we're not buying any more of these unless it's absolutely necessary. And we had one student who did earn their A+. And we had one student who passed the first test but failed the second one. And if you fail the second one, then you're done. You can't, you can't really do it again. Which kind of sucked. He was close. And because of that, I wasn't able to take my A+, exam. And since the the 1001, 1002 test is out now, I basically have to just purge all the info I already have about older stuff and start rereading some kind of newish stuff, stuff that's been around for a while. So just kind of like the middle of the book, basically. And then all the new stuff I really need to go in depth on for more specific information so that I'm as up to date as possible so that I can eventually take the tests for real. Except this time I'll have to pay for them on my own, which uh, I'm not looking forward to that, let's be honest. But, uh, yeah, oh shit, my pillow fell down. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And, uh, kind of while, I'll take a little little side, side note. Um, while I'm here, uh, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm recording on. Probably, maybe not, I don't know if you care. I do, but I got a very new computer while I was at Job Corps. I had a really good, uh, uh, what was the term for it? I'm already blanking on a lot of things. <laughs> they did things to my brain, I forget it, a lot of stuff. I don't know how to speak English, but uh, <laughs> it was a... Uh... Shit, this is going to drive me insane. Uh, fuck. I don't remember the actual term, but it was like trade related work. Um, basically, and one of the opportunities I had was to work with the, um, uh, uh, the National Interagency. Fire Center, I think is what the C so far. NIFC is what the, the place is called. I worked in the, the radio cache. So it was the, the federal, all the, the firefighters, federally, that actually go out nationwide and fight fires, mostly like in California, where they keep popping up bastards. Um, they um, use these radio kits, these huge, ginormous crates that have anywhere from 
10 to 20 like big industrial strength walkie talkies and naturally out they're out fighting fires they get covered in soot ash and it's just all gross and grimy maybe someone dropped one in the mud so when that kit is done when they're when that crew is done fighting a fire they're gonna send it back to this warehouse in Boise because that's where it's um, based is in Boise Idaho they they're not just gonna ship off a dirty set of walkie-talkies to firefighters they need clean and reliable hardware because if there's something like if some mud gets in and messes up the circuitry and it doesn't work they could there's a potential risk someone might die because they can't tell someone where they are or whatever there's a, a billion different reasons for why they do this but overall it's just to make life easier overall for the firefighters and so my job was to clean these radio kits inside and out put in new paperwork clean the radios uh, anything that was broken I just set aside and there was a whole different workshop where they actually repaired the insides of the walkie-talkies to make sure that they were in tip-top condition and that paid really damn well it was 1864 an hour basically not a full 40-hour work week but really good money at least uh, close to two grand every two weeks it's really nice really really nice for the time and uh, with that money I ended up getting a new computer I actually sold my old Alienware laptop to one of my roommates back at Job Corps because he needed a computer and I knew I was eventually going to upgrade to something much better than an Alienware laptop with little to no upgradability so sold that for a little oh, I think it was like a hundred bucks I think I sold it for a hundred two hundred something like that um, so I no longer have that which is just wonderful and I used that money from that uh, the NIFSI where I worked to buy a brand new desktop computer um, at when I first bought it uh, I got a Ryzen 5 uh, I think 2400 G so it had integrated Radeon graphics. Um, no, not Radeon, Vega graphics. Uh, I was still relatively new to the whole Ryzen AMD world. I've been an Intel guy my whole life. My dad's been an Intel his whole life. Or, well, not his whole life, my whole life. <laughs> Excuse me. He didn't start working at Intel out the, out the womb. It's a boy. Here, here you go. Here's your 20 employees to manage. No, that'd be cool though. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I just kind of grew up with Intel stuff, Intel computers. I mean, hell, my, my last desktop had a probably third or fourth gen i7, something like that. So it was, it was pretty good for the time. Uh, that computer is now my brother's, although it's kind of old and doesn't really work reliably anymore. I <laughs> mean, it's not, not, not great. But yeah, I got a Ryzen 5 2400G. Uh, because I really needed those integrated graphics because I didn't have enough money at first for a dedicated graphics card uh, but when I eventually did I ended up getting a GTX 1660 Ti which if you are unfamiliar with that you know you've heard the the, you know, the 1080 Ti or 1070 or even 1060 is one of them one of the more commonly known ones that's been around for a little while the 1660 Ti is basically imagine RTX without RTX <laughs> it's basically a good way to put it um, it's a really good graphics card you know can't do anything at 4k but at the time I was using a crappy it's actually right behind me I don't, can't really see it that well a little probably like 22 23 something odd inch uh, Vizio TV I got for dirt cheap while it's a job core <laughs> I think I I paid 30 bucks and I split it with my my roommate Logan so I paid 15 he paid 15 and we just kind of had like joint over like ownership of this TV with uh, you know it had an HDMI so it was enough it had garbage frame rates it just wasn't designed for use with a computer it was made more for like cable TV <laughs> if you're poor and couldn't afford a nice good sized screen but 
it worked. It still works. I now have a little, uh, I think a second gen Apple TV, maybe a first gen, I don't know, uh, hooked up to it for Netflix and whatnot. And it's nice. It works. It gets the job done. But, um, yeah, and so I now I recently uh, got a new monitor. It's a, I don't know the, the model off the top of my head, but it's a... Actually, I think I can find it. Let me see. It should say in the settings. Advanced display. Yeah, a Dell S2716DG by 1660 Ti. It's a 2K monitor, so 1440p, uh, 144 meg 144 hertz, not megahertz. God, if it were megahertz, it would be blazingly fast and super smooth. But yeah, 144 hertz, 2K monitor. Which is, it's, uh, I think, a 27 inch. So it's a lot nicer than, you know, 1080p basic TV. And at least this one has an adjustable stand, so I can actually tilt it to, you know, wherever I need it. It's so nice. And I also have a, I don't know the model, but a cheap Dell uh, Square 4x3. I don't even know if it's 720p. It probably isn't. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if it says for that one. Probably does. Yeah. A 2007 FP. Really weird square garbage resolutions, but I don't need anything fancy. I do all my main stuff on the big screen, and all just the secondary crap on the other one. I, I have the uh, OBS open on my secondary monitor because it doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to look all sexy 4K or whatever. I don't care about that. But yeah, and then when I first bought my computer, I had a, a gigabyte. You know what? I can actually go. To Amazon. Sorry for the sudden bright flash. Un momento. No, don't want that. Go back. I can actually show you all the stuff in my computer. No, I gotta go back. Let's do 2018. No, I want. No, I want 2019. Boom. Let's see. Let's go down a little bit. It's probably going to be on page two. Un momento, por favore. Okay. So, yeah. So I got to... Let me zoom this bad boy in a little bit. Let's see all the good goods. So I got a nice Fantex uh, ATX tower. Uh, Mid-tower, not a full. I'd like a full in the future, but... This night was 80 bucks. It was super cheap, and it, it works. It has a like, built-in... Uh, little LED strips. It came with an LED strip, which is just perfect. Because I knew I eventually wanted to do fully decked out RGB everything. Because I'm a, I'm a sucker for that RGB, all that goodness. And then I got, I actually, I can't remember if I don't remember if it was a combo or, no, it was some combo thing. They were bought separately, but anyway. Nice gigabyte motherboard that was a socket AM4 for the Ryzen. Uh, had built in HDMI and DVI and all that good stuff. DDR4. Uh, Ryzen 5 2400G with Radeon, Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics. Some of you might not know what the hell any of that is, but it's built in graphics. They are not great. Slightly better than some of the Intel dedicated graphics, gotta say. I I only recently gotten into the to the Ryzen fan club, but I'm liking it. It's really nice. Uh, I got 16 gigs of 2400 uh, DDR4 RAM, which is nice. I eventually like now I actually went and got um, 32 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz, so it's m higher capacity and much much faster. That's kind of one of the things with, with Ryzen, is they really prefer super fast RAM, which, you know, th this is plenty for what I needed to, just to have a decent basic computer, uh, Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard drive, 5400. I uh, would have preferred a 7200 RPM for a little bit faster speeds, but you know, at the time it was nothing. 
Well, I didn't need anything insane, mostly because I couldn't afford anything really great. But, uh, basic thermal take RGB 500 watt power supply. It's nice because it has a couple different RGB modes. Um, it sucks because it's just a standard power supply. Um, eventually, I want to go and get a fully modular power supply, maybe with a little bit higher wattage, just to you know play it safe. You know, have a lot of leg room just in case I want to add more parts in or whatever the case may be. But you know, it gets the job done. Uh, and I didn't order my graphics card through Amazon. I had to get it through Best Buy online because you know it's the place I found it for the cheapest. Surprisingly, um, it was I think it was a couple hundred dollars. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it's a good system. Um, but yeah, and I I now have in the system um, I got a, a new motherboard. So let me actually scroll back down. I'll show you. I got a new motherboard. I got an Asus Republic of Gamers Crosshair. Uh, what was that? Seven. Um, horrible Roman numerals. Has built-in Wi-Fi. I was really happy about that. My old motherboard, the Gigabyte one, did not have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which was very unfortunate. But I I did get this. Feb Smart $20 wireless card, which, you know, it worked. It got the job done, allowed me to connect to the internet. Uh, before that, in order to download, like, drivers and whatnot, I had to use this program called PDANet, which basically allows you to use uh, your mobile hotspot um, to, uh, you can use USB tethering, so it's like a direct connection rather than a wireless internet transfer to your computer but it bypasses uh, I do not condone or recommend this legally for legal repercussions but uh, <laughs> it basically bypasses your internet service providers you know T-Mobile excuse me T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint whatever you have it bypasses their normal uh, data limits you know, usually for hotspots or for USB tethering that's like 10 gigs, maybe you know 20 or 30 if you have a really good plan. But if you want to do gaming and stuff and want to download games and whatever, that can go and get sucked up really fast. So it bypasses that limitation. So it basically makes it makes it it's allows it basically makes your computer see it as a Wi-Fi rather than a uh, USB tether. Uh, they're, they're my, uh, one of my old roommates could explain a lot better about how it really works, but it got the job done and allowed me to have internet so I could update drivers and whatnot. And it worked. It was a basic system. I had to initially, I uh, couldn't get a, a good copy of Windows at first, so I had to get a copy of uh, uh, Ubuntu, a Linux, which I hated oh so much. I tried using Linux and no, nah, not a fan. Not a fan. I've just I've just grown up with Windows my whole life. And I think the earliest one I remember using was probably probably 95 or 98 maybe. Definitely XP. I know for certain XP. I'm not sure if I ever used anything prior to that though. Um, uh, yeah, had some thermal grease for my CPU because the, the one it, that I got the CPU cooler that it came with stock, the CPU uh, it just had like a little thin pad of thermal, a little square thermal paste already on it which kind of works but in the long run you know, it'd be better to get something that's more suitable for really good thermal transfers so I got this Arctic MX4 thermal compound and you know good quality it's uh, the kind that doesn't have any metal in it so if I accidentally applied too much and it got into the, the contacts it wouldn't cause any havoc it would just be a real pain in the ass to clean but <laughs> it wouldn't short your system which when you have a, like a thousand dollar computer you don't want anything fucking up no no you don't <laughs> but yeah I got a brand new system. Um, I have a, a bunch of hard drives. Um, so I have 
uh, that Western Digital Blue, one terabyte, that was just my, my boot drive for the longest time. And that's where I had everything. The boot drive and all my games, which eventually got pretty darn close to full, because I have a lot of games. <laughs> and a lot of movies and all that. And I eventually got uh, two portable hard drives. I uh, might not be... It's probably going to be down a little more. Let me see. Yeah, this one here. It's Toshiba... 4 terabyte portable hard drive and it it's really nice I have a lot of movies on here movies and videos and I think one game I don't remember which one it was in this nice case to go with it um, then uh, when I got all of my new stuff I got this monitor I got uh, that RAM and I also got a one terabyte uh, Samsung 970 Evo M.2 solid state drive, which is now my boot drive, so it is super snappy and just perfect in every single way, and oh, I love it. I love those quick, snappy, real fast boot load times, and just wonderful. Um, but while I was getting all that stuff, I also got a 4 terabyte uh, Western Digital My Passport. I also have a 1 terabyte Western Digital My Passport. Um, I have an orange one, which is the one terabyte, and then the one I got recently is silver and black. The only nice thing, well actually, one of the many nice things about the new Western Digital is, you know, it's four terabytes as opposed to one, but it also runs over Type-C for the super blazing, like, I think, like 20 to 40 gigabits per second speed. It's just absolutely insane. And... Lo and behold, my new bright and shiny fancy motherboard has a Type-C connector on it, which is, oh, I absolutely love it. And so I have a really good system that's more than enough for recording games and storing all those games and just being perfect for every single thing I need. So, this video's gone a little long. <laughs> I kind of went off on some random tangents and whatnot, but I am back. I'm currently in the point where I'm looking for work, so that's fun, and I figure in my, in my downtime, you know, after I'm, you know, next to studying and looking for jobs, I want to start doing YouTube again. And, let me see, I have a, you're welcome for that beautiful wallpaper, I have a bunch of games I'd love to start playing, uh, some of which are new. Um, some of which I've already done. I want to do newer things that I haven't done yet. Like, I definitely want to go through, uh, Doom. Now you might not be able to see it, but... Let me... Move some stuff over. There we go. Now you can see. I want to go through Doom. Without a doubt. I, uh, <laughs> want to do a quick, like, maybe... It's probably not even going to be videos, like a series, but just probably one, maybe, maybe two of this old game that I used to play when I was, jeez, less than 10 years old, probably closer to like maybe five or six, probably even, maybe even younger than that, I don't, it's been years since I even touched it, but it's called Pajama Sam, and I'm hoping somebody out there just got a huge bunch of nostalgia, and just a good flashback to a really nice childhood, because I sure as hell did, this, uh, they have all of them on Steam. This one, I think, was like 7 bucks, which is a little ridiculous considering how old the game is and how basic the hardware is that's needed to run the damn thing. I mean, it's old enough that it, that it has to use, um, I don't remember, like, Scum VM, I think is the name of it. It's a virtual machine that basically emulates the correct hardware and software needed to run this ancient game. And it is, it's just the funniest fucking thing ever. <laughs> but it works. I, I literally beat it in less than an hour. It's such a simple game. It's made for kids, for God's sake. But it, 18 out of 10 on the nostalgia factor, without a doubt. And it is so fun. I'd love to go make an actual YouTube, probably a couple videos about it, maybe. Break it into chunks to make life a little simpler. But I'd love to do that game and find out little hidden secrets and whatnot. 
uh, want to do some Fallout 4, uh, some Grand Theft Auto probably, just just get a bunch of games and just start doing new series. I'm probably, I'm, I'm going to keep the stuff that's already on my channel. I, for a little bit, was contemplating just starting my channel completely from scratch, like deleting everything I have on there, but then I realized that, no, I don't want to have to get rid of that stuff. That it, some of those videos I worked really hard on. I mean, especially like that, um, let me go back and find it, yeah. This, uh, this FTL video right here. It took a long time to do some of the more complex edits that I did, and it was a ton of fun. And I love making that video, so I don't want to just get rid of it and push it away like it was nothing. And so I'm definitely going to keep everything that I already have. And I'll probably, like, I'll probably put it into, like, a single playlist. Or, like, maybe have a different... I'll figure out a good way to categorize everything. I'll uh, just kind of start from scratch but not delete everything I've already done sort of thing. Uh, let me go ahead and this guy back over yeah boom but uh yeah so i think for now i will leave it here it's almost 11 o'clock at night and i need some sleep so <laughs> um yeah i'm glad to be back i look forward to making a lot of new stuff for you guys and keeping you happy and i'll definitely be more regular i'm gonna try to keep to a I got weird, like, not hiccups, like burp up kind of things. Yeah. But uh, try to keep to a, a reasonable schedule. I want to try to make a, a good number of videos that aren't too long. I want to try to stick to like maybe half an hour videos at the absolute longest. Like for a really, like for bigger games, like stuff like Grand Theft Auto or Fallout 4, for example, to have a ton of story and a lot of side quests and whatnot that could potentially take a long time. I'm gonna try to keep it to half an hour, at at the most, maybe an hour, depending on what whatever you guys would like. But we'll kind of leave it up to you in the long run. This video is already gonna be almost 45 minutes, so I will shut up now. <laughs> so uh, have a good night, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're located. Have a good time of day in. in uh, enter location here. <laughs> but I am uh, glad to be back. I am looking forward to making some new stuff for all you guys. So, in the meantime, I'm going to go to sleep and, you know, after I upload this video. But glad to be back and I look forward to making more videos for you. So, yeah, remember to like, comment, subscribe, you know. The whole shebang that every YouTuber has to say. I don't give a shit. So, yeah. I will see you guys in the next video. Whatever it may be. So, later everybody.